Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of R&D VMware, Steve Herod. Hey, good afternoon. Hope you guys are uh, hanging in there during the coffee hour. I think you're going to have a lot of fun in this session. Um, it gives me a great pleasure to get to introduce the EMC Super Session. Um, we talked about a lot this morning from Paul and, and myself about where we see the world of secure hybrid cloud going. Um, EMC has exactly the same vision, and they're backing it up with some incredible product announcements, some great integrations. Um, so I think you're going to really enjoy that. It's also a privilege to introduce Pat Gelsinger, who I've known while he was at Intel, and also as he now is president and COO of the Information Infrastructure Group, um, running an entire group that's still incredibly technical and fun to talk to about strategy, so a, a really great person. And I also understand we're going to get a bit of a cameo from... Uh, Virtual Geek and the V-Specialists, which should be a band name if it's not already. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, enjoy the session. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, you know, I, I just wish, I just wish I was as good-looking as Steve Herod, I was as young as Steve Herod, and I was as smart as Steve Herod. You know, that would just be perfect, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, besides that, besides all of that, you know, young, good-looking, smart, he's also a really nice guy, right? So, anyway, I really have great respect for Steve. You know, love working with him and highly appreciative that he'd uh, kick us uh, off at the session today. Uh, we do have our V-Specialist here appropriately adorned, so woohoo! Yeah. First time I saw him, it sort of reminded me like of the uh, Lonely Hearts Band from the Beatles or something. You, you couldn't quite get over those shirts. But anyway, they're you know a great bunch and uh, just absolute lunatics for making uh, VMware happen. You know with uh, EMC. So you know great to have them, and you'll see several of them as part of the keynote today. And uh, you know as we're going along here, you know it's my uh, pleasure to uh, give the EMC uh, super session. Uh, this is the first time I've presented at uh, VMworld since I was an Intel executive, so that was very different. Uh, and uh, so I have the great pleasure of giving sort of the EMC uh, view of what we're doing here with uh, uh, VMware. So, where are my slides? Okay, so legal junk. Okay. Oh, important legal junk, forgive me. I got it. Um, so, you know, why, why is this idea of cloud important, right? You know, the idea of, to, the, of private cloud says, you know, private data centers, you build them because of these characteristics, because they're trusted, controlled, reliable, secure. It is my apps on my infrastructure. I'm responsible for it. And increasingly, I'm legally responsible for it as well, right? But, you know, we have this promise of the public data centers, Right, where they're dynamic, cost-efficient, scalable, all of those great uh, attributes built on homogeneous x86 uh, capabilities for scalability, standardization, operational efficiency. You know, could I just have the best of both worlds? And that is really at the heart of the EMC VMware strategy is building the best of both worlds, building on a common ingredients. Right, that's where we see the VMware, the virtualization layer, is being so critical against that and being able to deliver those into IT. Our job is to make our current IT CIO customers as efficient, right, as cost effective, as if they were operating a public cloud environment. But doing so in a manner that also is built on the same technologies, the same ingredients, and you saw some of this in Paul's keynote this morning. He described the management layer, right? It needs to be at the security layer, it needs to be at the data plane layer as well, that I can federate and interoperate across public and private environments to deliver hybrid environments as well. And, you know, in our own, you know, Paul mentioned, hey, he had, I forget, six uh, uh, SaaS apps that were being utilized inside of VMware. I think in uh, uh, EMC, we have on the order of 10. You know, we're operating a hybrid cloud already. We just aren't able to federate and make those things operate together. So, you know, that's the vision. Bring the best of both worlds together. Doing it for today's application. For traditional applications, encapsulating them up and bringing them forward, that's one of the huge powers of virtualization and encapsulation. Do it with today's apps, but also create a framework for tomorrow's apps as well. And that's very much where things like the Spring Source framework are so critically powerful. And then allowing the two to federate together. And we'll talk a little bit more about VPlex in the course of our discussion today, but allow vMotion and vMotion Anywhere and long-distance vMotion to be complemented by storage flexibility as well. And the combination of the two really enables this federation. 
operate across multiple internal data centers, an internal data center with a public data center, and even some cases, and I had just met with a CIO this last week, and he was saying, oh, you know, I like that picture, but I want to do it with my business partners. I want to federate with my business partners, not just the public cloud, but somebody else's private cloud. Oh, I hadn't thought through that scenario and some of the business ramifications of that, but this whole idea of federation of flexibility. So with that as the vision, you know, what's driving this to be the time that cloud is so important? Why is this the, you know, the moment in computing history where, you know, cloud washing goes to cloud reality? And there's a variety of things for that. We've certainly seen, you know, that CIOs, this is just very quickly, you know, move to the top of their list of things that they want to do. Virtualization, cloud computing, right, you know, has, you know, rocketed onto the top of the list of the things that CIOs are interested in. Our job, technology providers, respond to our customers. So CIOs want it, our job is to deliver it. But deeper in that is, you know, IT continues to struggle with complexity, inefficiency of the underlying infrastructure where they're spending the vast majority of their budget, you know, to keep the junk running as opposed to being able to build and operate new applications and services for their customers. Furthermore, we consider that we're just beginning Right, this move to the digitization of information. And this was a study uh, that uh, we recently uh, completed that shows just this continuing explosion uh, of data. And as IDC uh, indicates, a 44x growth over the next decade of the amount of data. Right? And you're all part of the problem. Right? You know, you know, it's your Facebook and your Twitter feeds and your photos and all that stuff that is just becoming part of it. And increasingly, it's not just structured data. Right, it's not just corporate data, right, but personal data. Right, and that explosion of digitization of information and the availability of images and videos and YouTubes right, that are driving up this huge amount. And people want to access that, get business function as well. Right, and we're starting to see some customers who are saying, hey, I want to take and use some of that publicly available information to better understand some of my customers and how to reach them, market to them as well. So what's public and what's private becomes more interesting as you bring those together. So explosion of information. And the result of that is driving us to this point where it's all about the cloud. And that is the vision, the strategy that we're driving forward is take and allow our traditional customers on the cloud, enable new customers, enable service providers on that model, and allow the two to operate together. Now, everybody is talking about cloud. Right, sort of uh, in the uh, kickoff uh, keynote this morning, even some of those who aren't talking about cloud were talking about cloud this morning, as you might have seen the picture of Larry, right? You know, and so on. You know, and that was fun. And we sort of think, and as I've looked at this and thought about it, you can view almost everything going on in the industry against th- this lens, where there's three different perspectives. One, right, the California hotel, right, that you heard him talk about this morning, right, the Uber cloud. Bring everything in, you may not get it out, right? You can check in, you can't check out. If I was a better Eagles fan, I'd sing it for you. And, you know, that's very much Google, Amazon, Microsoft. And there's the vertical stack, right? And you can view almost every acquisition that's going on against that lens where, hey, build that vertical stack, get more completion to the solution that's being offered. And that's very much the HP, IBM, and the Oracle model, right, where they want to have the solution, right, from silicon, to system integration, right, delivered in a cohesive, singular manner. And then finally, the vertical, the, or the virtual strategy, which is the heart of what EMC, VMware, Cisco, and our other open industry partners are pursuing, is create an open environment with a common view of a standardized set of compute, storage, and networking capability that fundamentally is open and standardized and allows for the separation of application and services from underlying infrastructure. A fundamental architectural shift, a shift in business models, a shift in industry structure, a dramatic change to every layer of what we do as the IT industry. And against this lens, I think you can look at everything that's going on, both the technology perspectives, the acquisitions that we see going on, the shifts in business model, the new formation of partnerships, all can be plotted against this picture of the entire structure of the industry. And we see very much that our strategy, we think, is the most appealing to CIOs, the most appealing to service providers, and we think has the greatest long-term scalability and legs to it as we go to implement it in the future. 
So that's the strategy. Those are the industry reasons why, right? This compare, you know, the comparison to other strategies. So now let's dig into our journey as we work with our customers to the private cloud. You saw this morning, this uh, same model reflected in the conversation this morning, the three phases of the journey, IT production, business production, and IT as a service. Lowering costs, getting efficiency, right, improving robustness, re- resiliency, and finally, agility and business value. That's the three phases of the journey. And we'll use that as an outline for the major product capabilities that EMC is delivering to enable each of these three phases of the journey to the private cloud. So the first phase, all about right, the implementation of IT productivity. Often this is done with the you know, capabilities that IT controls and manages. Last week, EMC uh, announced the next, uh, uh, the next major release of our unified product capabilities, both our block and our file capabilities, new uh, storage uh, capabilities to go with it, new capabilities with Flash, Fast Cache, and so on, new management capabilities to go against that, uh, a set of new features that go as part of that, just a raft of new capabilities as part of this major new release of our block and our file offerings for Clarion and Solera, respectively. And we would love to tell you all about all the details and every piece of those products that we just announced. Or we could summarize it very simply. It's called the simplification and the efficiency of our mid-range storage products. Simple and efficient. And of course, we just launched a major campaign of our marketing efforts to describe this to the industry. And if you weren't one of the 1.3 million people who've seen this on YouTube, I just thought we'd take a second to show it to you. Ma'am, may I see your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance, please? Sure, officer. Got a Sarah Phillips doing 78 to 65, DL 223, 227. Roger. Ma'am, you do know you were doing 78 and 65? Yeah. She's free to go. She was doing 78 to 65. It says here that's the extra 20% she gets for switching to EMC. Huh? You can get 20% more storage just by switching to EMC. Guaranteed. Get your extra 20% today. Free to go, ma'am. EMC, huh? Yeah, they're great. <laughs> Okay, now this is an age test. How many of you know who that was? How many of you have no idea? Okay, a few of you. Okay, so anyway, yeah, so. I used to love chips, right? Anyway, so anyway, so it was important to me, so I'm glad you enjoyed it too. But, you know, very simply, you know, unified storage, we're making it more efficient for our company customers, we're making it simpler for our customers. You know, the product capabilities that we've delivered are significant. You know, a dramatic improvement in performance, a dramatic improvement in features, reliability, new capabilities like compression, new capabilities in our flash capabilities and our fast capabilities. Way cool product, but it boils down to this, simple and efficient, right? And the product line is focused very heavily on making those simple and efficiency messages delivered and real for our customers and most importantly, in VMware virtualized environments with the deepest and best integration of any product line in the industry. Optimized for VMware, we have over 60 integration points of the product for VMware environments, increased vCenter integration, the best and most complete support for VAAI uh, support, and the fast suite is uniquely optimized for operation right in a virtualized environment. And we have a session that we love for you to attend and learn more about the product line. You know, it's a very, very uh, significant product enhancement for us, and we're quite excited about delivering that for virtualized VMware environments. But of course, I could tell you about it, or we could show you it. 
So today we'd like to give a quick demonstration of specifically how this product line operates in a storage DRS environment. And, uh, you know, the uh, V specialist way that I introduced before also is affectionately known as Chad's Army. So Chad, if you could join me on stage here and uh, give us our demonstration of storage DRS. Absolutely, Pat. Absolutely. Um, hello, everybody. This, now I will point out, <laughs> stars for the general. <laughs> Thank you, and, and thanks, everybody. Thank you for being EMC and, and VMware customers. So this is very, very cool. Uh, what we're seeing is, is uh, a demonstration of how storage I.O. control and uh, fully automated storage tiering work together to deliver quality of service for, or for any application and do it in a simple, easy VMware and integrated way. So let's take a quick look. Um, what we're going to see is we're going to see the, uh, uh, let's go to the forward. Yes. Okay. Uh, the idea here is that we've got a series of Oracle workloads. We've got some production VMs, and we've got some, uh, uh, um, uh, some VMs that are also, uh, a, 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 you know, a developer. And developer is going to go uh, a little bit on, uh, a little bit to the side, because he's created something and hasn't actually realize he's going to cause a major problem. So off he goes. Here you can see the three VMs, the two production Oracle VMs, and then the one uh, developer VM. And the developer is going to kick off the workload. So if we take a look at what's going on, you'll see that uh, the, the production VMs are running a, a Swingbench OLTP workload. And they're doing you know, roughly around 16,000 transactions per minute. Okay. So that's so a pretty good workload. That's a pretty good workload. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's supporting something that's very important in the business. Now, developer goes a little awry. Right? Never happens at EMC, but... Never, it never happens at EMC. Maybe some of your places. So the developer basically is going to kick off his workload, and since they're all running on the same vSphere cluster and they're running on the same common data stores, there's going to be a little bit of an impact, right? Uh, shared pooled resources. So as he kicks off that workload, you can see that the production workload is going to be impacted. The transactions per minute now have gone down, uh, and they're going to continue to go down as the workloads contend. Now, VMware has introduced a killer new feature in vSphere 4.1, Storage IO Control, which allows you to protect that one data store uh, against these contending workloads. So it gives you instant relief for this problem, not the resolution of how do we add more performance, which we'll add as a second part of the equation. So we're going to go in and we're going to limit the IO that that developer's VM can do against that common shared data store. So we'll say you can only do 30 IOPS you know, you've been pulled over by Eric Estrada and he's, you know, giving you a ticket. So now that we've done that, we're going to see that the production workload is going to be now insulated from that bursting workload. There's lots of examples of the VMware View use case, for example. You know, you could uh, use that to help drive efficiency, which we can also do in fast cache. And the thing here is you can see that the workload dropped down for the developer and you can see the primary storage workload is now on its way back up to health. Now, the thing is, what if you want more performance? You want the other half of what DRS does for compute, which is move the workloads around to be the most efficient. What we've introduced with the idea of fully automated storage tiering is exactly that. So in the simple and easy block and NAS UI Unisphere, which is a huge, huge, huge ease of use capability that also integrates with vCenter, we're going to go in and we've actually, we think that people are just going to leave this on automated, just let it go. Here, for the purpose of this, we've said, let's kick it off manually. So we're going to say, let's automate the tiering between solid state and lower performance disk, which is the equivalent of vMotioning the VMs via DRS on the VMware cluster. So here, let's say, OK, uh, let's kick off that action. And right now, all of the data is on lower performance SATA storage, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, fully automated storage tiering is going to analyze the data on the array and say, what data should be moved? So as we take a look, the tiering right now, you can see that it's all down there on the, on the SATA tier. If we take a look and see what the recommendation is going to be, it's going to look at the hot data, which is that production Oracle uh, workload, which is actually enhanced by storage IO control. Those two things work together. And you can see it says, you know what, I should promote 265 gigs of, of data to the solid state tier. So what that looks like back to the actual application, because this is all below the virtual infrastructure layer, right? Let's say, OK, let's do that promotion. Again, just like with DRS, you could have it in partially automated or fully automated mode. You know, increasingly more and more customers are realizing they need to hand over some of the keys of control to make things more efficient and simpler. Now that data is moving, let's go and take a look at the Oracle workload. You can see that it brought back to the baseline after we implemented the instant fix. 
Now we're actually going to resolve the underlying contention problem by continuing to grow performance. And if you take a look, as that data moves from the SATA tier to the solid state tier, the solid state drives are going to drive performance up and up and up, and the scale is going to need to keep changing. Remember, we started roughly around 16,000 transactions per minute. You can see we're rapidly cr climbing here into the 25,000 range, right? So two killer capabilities, storage IO control and fully automated storage sharing from EMC deliver what DRS does today for compute and for, for memory. So we saw the simplicity, mm -hmm. right? We saw the efficiency, and we saw the VMware integration. Absolutely. Very cool. Very, very cool indeed. Thank you, Chad. You got it. Yeah, very much delivering on those core messages. And if you ever have a chance to talk to Chad, if you don't know him, right, he is like a virtualization, marketing, engineering, techno babble machine, right? You know, it's just, it is incredible. So those are some of the key things that we're delivering, right, in products just announced last week. Uh, the Unisphere announced earlier this year for that first phase of the journey, IT production. Second phase of the journey, moving to business critical applications, you know, the real stuff, the stuff that's important to business operations, mission critical for it. And as we think about this, very much what we're trying to do to storage is what virtualization actually did to compute. And if we think about the journey that virtualization and ESX and VMware have been on, you know, fundamentally they took standalone resources and they basically consolidated them together. So now I have, you know, a multiple, four, you know, maybe ten, right? In fact, I've uh, recently met with some CAOs that are talking about consolidation ratios of greater than 50 to 1, right, coming on to, right, their virtualized environment. Enormous, right? You know, those big Nehalem servers, I'm proud of that chip, doing good. <laughs> I really do like it. Um, and that, that's really the first value proposition that VMware brought to the market, consolidation. The second value proposition is much more this flexibility. You know, DRS, vMotion, the ability to pool resources, to do load balancing, to create HA groups, right, to be able to move things off of servers so that you can idle them for power savings and efficiency. Right, and that pools of cooperation, very, very powerful uh, capability. Well, that's exactly what we want to do with storage. Exactly that same progression. Go from standalone, fixed, provision, heavy, right, you know, uh, you know, very uh, you know, difficult to manage and maintain right, individual tiers of storage into consolidated, and that's what you just saw with FAST, right? this idea of automated storage tiering. We make right, those tiers go away. They're all high performance because we flash them. They're all cost effective because we move them to colder storage. It's consolidation. And then creation of pools, right? The ability to federate storage arrays together and make it easier to move things around. But then when we bring those two ideas together, right? The idea of the virtualization of computing with the virtualization of storage, we can start to enable federation, cooperating pools of resources between my compute and my storage, allowing flexibility between, right, not just my you know, resources of computing, but now across my storage array as well. And when you operate those two together, wow, we can start enabling powerful new usage models. The key product to enable this is what we call VPlex. It's based on advanced data caching uh, technologies that uh, combines that with many of our expertise that we have on large you know, large data sets of storage arrays and this ability to do this over distance, right? We support open storage, so this is for our products as well as for others of the bad guy storage products uh, and uh, enabling that, right, uh, across distance with our distributed cache coherence architecture. VPlex, we're now shipping uh, into the marketplace the version one of the product, which allows for local operation, you know, for data mobility within the data center, as well as metro operation across two data centers at synchronous distance. We'll be delivering the asynchronous version of that, the geo version, uh, early next year, or the first half of next year, and then the metro version in 2012. So this capability we're quite excited about. The combination of those two is enabling capabilities like database sharing over distance, shared volumes over distance, or VM teleportation.
And we demonstrated at uh, EMC World earlier this year, moving of 500 uh, VMs from uh, Hopkinton to Boston. But uh, hey, this is VM World. Chad, can we do a little bit better? Absolutely. <laughs> now, so, so 500 over what was it? About uh, it was, 50 kilometers. Or it was so? actually a little bit. It was about a, 68 kilometers. 68 kilometers. Okay. So, what are you going to be able to do for us today? Well, do not try this at home, kids. <laughs> right. Um, so we we wanted to see what happens if we dial it up to 12. Right. You know, what happens if we start to just add a little more distance between the sites, a little bit, and then let's add a little bit more, and a little bit more. In other okay. words... Show me, baby. Come exactly. On. So uh, this, is, this is a really, really cool idea, and it shows you where VMware and EMC are working on this idea of federation. So VPlex is there in the EMC hands-on lab. It's very simple and easy to use, right? We've created a distributed volume. So this volume is read-writable in these two places uh, that we're going to increasingly dial up the distance between them. This is basically the latency simulator. So let's put 10 milliseconds of latency. We'll ping it. This is both IP latency as well as the latency on the storage side, mm -hmm. right? So 14 milliseconds is now the round trip latency between the two sites, which roughly corresponds with going, you know, here from uh, Buffalo, you know, Boston to Buffalo, right? Okay. So it's a lot longer than the original, you know, 68 kilometers. We do a V motion. V motion takes. Just a little bit of time. There's a minor, minor performance degradation while it's moved, and then there's nothing after the fact. And we just basically teleported a very large OLTP workload from Buffalo, uh, from Boston to Buffalo in five minutes, which okay. is cool. That's cool. Let's go click, 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 okay. dial it up a little bit further. Yeah, right? come on. This is VMworld. 26, exactly. This is VMworld, right? Come on. So 26 milliseconds of latency. This okay. is now going Boston to Chicago. Okay. Again, teleporting the VM. We're V-motioning it over now hundreds of kilometers, and we're doing it completely non-disruptively. So again, you can see that we're not smoking something when we talk about this idea of private and public cloud federation. These are things that we are actively, actively developing, de delivering today in terms of synchronous distances. 14 minutes to move that same VM, now over, you know, basically 14, 1,400 kilometers. So okay, let's dial good. it a little bit further, okay. 44 yeah. milliseconds, right? We're now doing it over 2,300 kilometers okay. while this the is VM is running. Okay, right? this is interesting. By the way, you know, that's about Omaha, but you know what's interesting? If you take that latency, if it was dark fiber, it would be a third of the way around the world, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a measure of latency, not really distance, mm -hmm. but that's AT&T if you're using AT&T, isn't it? Okay. Right? <laughs> so, okay. Great. So we've now moved it. it there's some more, little more performance degradation. I hope AT&T wasn't in yeah, the audience. Yeah, sorry. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> any carrier, right? Uh, so the, the, the thing that I think is important in this, right, is it's completely non-disruptive as, as an operation, right? And uh, this is literally bits hot off of your engineer's presses, right, that they gave our little V-specialists in the secret lab. You know, as we continue to do this, we think we can go over longer and longer distances, and we're working hand in hand with our friends at VMware around what does that look like for VMHA, mm -hmm. DRS behavior? You know, how do we deal with you know partition states? Very, very cool stuff. So again, it just shows the stuff I get to play with, man, is awesome. Man, I don't even know why we pay you. You have so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so hey, Chan. Yeah. But what are we going to show next year? Oh, I've, I've got a plan. I think we can do the moon and back. The moon and back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and also, if you go to the EMC booth, right, yeah, we just think this is game-changing technology. It allows you to think differently about what you do in the data center or across data centers, how you design data centers, how you operate your applications over distance, how you look at active-active, how you look at DR and business continuity, high availability environments. It really is transformational to the overall IT architecture of the future. So, you know, we have a spe you know, special program, try storage for 90 days, and, you know, we think as you start to play with this, it'll really change how you think about your storage environment for the future. Next technology that we think is really game-changing to the overall CIO infrastructure environment 
And, uh, you know, very simply, you know, we've had a backup and archive environment for many, many years that was based on technology, right, that was uh, developed before most of us were born, and in many cases, right before, you know, our uh, parents were born, right, based on, you know, magnetic tape, right? It's just been around for freaking ever. So, you know, the question is, can we do better than that, right? And that whole area of uh, changing to disk-based backup has rocketed, right? And imagine that, you know, this is boring stuff, backup. Right? It's the number one CIO priority for storage. And EMC is clearly the leader between our data domain products and our Avamar products for target-based deduplication. And we've gone to great lengths to integrate these to make it highly effective uh, for our uh, uh, VMware environments. So target-based as well as source-based between data domain and the Avamar product lines. We're taking steps to better integrate those products together over time. And most importantly, make it highly effective for virtualized environments against the same themes of simplicity uh, and efficiency. And uh, this is one customer, a quote, uh, you know, with uh, EMC and uh, Honda, a success, and as you read here, you know, protection capabilities are truly exceptional. And when you get quotes like, customer quotes like that, you know, it's just, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. So, you know, these products are having great affinity, great effectiveness, really transforming the entire category of uh, backup in the uh, virtualized data center and for cloud computing in the future. Future. So if you haven't part- started participating there, we'd love to talk to you more about these product lines. We also see, and we heard some of the framework for this in Paul's uh, and uh, Steve's discussion this morning, security in the virtual world. You know, to us, security is the, you know, I sort of think about management and security as sort of the twin evils, right? You know, all of us think about getting the data flowing to the right places and the computing happening at the right places. But then the questions are, how do you manage it? How do you secure it? Right? And those, there's so much complexity associated with that, so much of the hard work of that. And security in the virtual world is something that we're not just interested in being as secure as the physical world, but being more secure than the physical world ever could be. Moving from perimeter-based to integrated, moving from large, fragile edge-based to something that is done in a very dynamic fashion with far more granular policies and implementation. Right? We're going to do that. We're going to ground it in you know, basic underlying security mechanisms at the chip level. That's very much the TXT technology enabling trusted boot, right? facilitating that through right, the uh, uh, virtualization layer, combining that with technologies like uh, RSAs. And we made several announcements this week specifically around our partnerships for vShield and how RSA and DLP are integrating to that environment. Combining that as well then, right, with RSA and its uh, work to partner with application vendors so that you're securing access to information. Furthermore, integrating that into overall compliance environments. I oh, have to hit the button again. Uh, through our Archer, and we announced uh, this week the integration of Archer, right, uh, with uh, VMware and being able to treat virtualized uh, data feeds to enable compliance and uh, monitoring of compliant environments through Archer doing that for IT operation as well as for cloud operation and being able to set policies such as we described this week with our RSA announcement to be able to set geographic policy. These VMs can only operate in these states, in these countries, in these geographies. These VMs can only operate on secure, uh, trusted boot environments and setting other such policies and being able to both set those policies as as well as demonstrating compliance to those environments. So what we like to do again is, you know, give a quick demonstration of securing private and public cloud environments. And what a surprise. We're inviting Chad back again. I know you weren't expecting that, but, you know, Chad. (laughs) (laughs) It's good to be here again. Uh, This is really, really cool. Uh, People made fun of me. Apparently, people don't know the word grok. Does people here know grok? This is something you got to grok. It's so cool. So basically, uh, uh, what we're going to show you here is how these capabilities all fit together. So uh, how do you make the cloud, whether it's private or public, compliant? It's about this whole chain of security operations. And then how can you deliver that for the VMware administrator all the way up into a dashboard for the CIO, right? Because you have to show it in both worlds. You've got to tie all those things together onto a dashboard, which is what Archer is. So if you take a look, what we've done is Archer will integrate all of, all with, it actually integrates today with vCenter pulls together all of the uh, v- vSphere resources, ESX hosts, vCenter servers, VMs themselves, and aggregates all that information up through deep, deep uh, PowerShell integration that we've developed, as well as the API integration. Now, what does that mean? It means that all of the hardening guidelines 
for, uh, and policy settings that you would want to do on a vSphere host can be aggregated up into this state dashboard. Right? So you can say, is my VMware environment secure? As people change things, as the administrators are adding and removing hosts, what needs to be remediated, right? So some people, I actually asked a survey on the blog, and people said it's very difficult for us to identify, are we complying with those settings? So for example, we've just added another ESX uh, server, in fact, an ESXi host, to our cluster. Well, what do you need to go and do? So if you take a look, there's a whole set of processes which can be automated to remediate as well as workflows because some things you want to have a human go in and actually change a setting. Now, how many people actually go through and do all of these things all the time as they add hosts? Today, not many because it's difficult to track and manage. We've made that simple, easy, right? And as you uh, take a look at this, as we remediate some of those changes, it changes directly in the dashboard, right? So at the VMware uh, administrator layer or at the CIO, CEO, or, or chief security officer layer, they can take a look at the entire environment, not only against VMware hardening guidelines, but things like PCI and HIPAA compliance, right? So all of those sorts of things that govern that people have to enforce. So if we take a look as an example, here's something where someone's done something bad, we've done, and we have an automated process that gathers all this information. I do this all the time on my home lab. You change the V switch or the distributed V switch to let promiscuous, you know, promiscuous mode be enabled, right? Which you know sometimes you do if you're using a virtual app, whatever. You know, I, 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 I yeah, I it's not a good thing to Keep do in going, a production yeah. environment, right? Yeah, they, they understand, Chad, what your lab is like at home. So. Exactly yeah. right. So uh, the point here is, is that the process of basically remediating that and changing it is simple, easy, and automated. And we can do that for the physical world and the virtual world all in a single view. So you can see the compliant state for security things and all of those policies in one simple place. What goes even cooler is not only can we integrate with vCenter, we can actually pull system events and logs from all sorts of sources. vShield zones being one of them, right? vShield app, all of the new vShield family of products. And it brings it all up, again, into that dashboard. Have firewall rules been violated? Things like high trust, right? So can we take uh, you know, extra hardening against the users that high trust would provide? Can we take those events? Security thing has been denied. OK, fantastic. Log gets gathered up and the events gets brought up in the whole compliance dashboard. So simple, easy compliance for the cloud, right? Now, I think that that's all very cool, but the thing that is very interesting on top of that that we've been working with Intel, and this is a bit of a preview of where we're going you know, next, and Terramark's been a huge and great partner as we've gone through this, the challenge of where in the world you know, Carmen Sandiego is my VM is getting increasingly difficult, right? So, hey, are we properly provisioned? You know, where is the thing? Where's the server? Where's the VM? We want it to be mobile. It's being vplexed all over the place, right? But there are standards that you have to comply to. So how do you do that, right? Without giving up all of the goodness that's mobility and fluidity. So in, this is a basic picture. Hey, don't go from there to there. You, you enable the trusted boot. You enable TXT, right? So we can embed this directly in the hardware. Now, the question then becomes, you know, how do you aggregate all this stuff together? This is a little bit of hackery and pokery that I'm doing here, right? But this can be done en masse and on scale. We've embedded now that server is in the United States. It's embedded in the trusted hardware. Now, as you create data center objects, vSphere clusters, all of those properties are inherited by the virtual machines as you go through it. And as you create virtual machines, their policy about geolocation can be embedded directly in the metadata, in the, in the OVF data. So here what we've done is we've enabled this setting. Today this is not supported yet in vSphere 4.1, but you know, it's VMworld, we show where we're going. Um, and uh, when you go and create a virtual machine, it now inherits that policy. Now, again, there's no way to manage this on a micro scale. You need to have a dashboard that you can say, am I FISMA compliant? And again, for customers, I've spoken with enterprises, service providers and, and uh, you know, small businesses, this is a major barrier to cloud adoption, particularly in, the, in, in uh, the federal space. So here what we can see is we can see that automated assessment, not only for hardening and for PCI and HIPAA, we can say, hey, that cluster is in the United States. Hey, that ESX host is in the United States. And hey, that VM can only be in, in the United States. And we can enforce that policy as well as audit against that policy. You know, simple, easy, and incredible capability that's really available now for the first time in the private cloud use case and in this geolocation thing coming soon to a theater near you um, and uh, really unique capabilities that we're bringing to our service provider partners to make that hybrid cloud a secure hybrid cloud. Thank you very much, Chad. You bet. It's my pleasure.
And in talking to CIOs and CIO surveys, one of their greatest fears of moving to cloud is security, right? Where, right, they're already struggling with this. And in many cases, it is their biggest issue for CIOs today. They just fear what security will look like in the virtualized cloud environments. These are really, really important capabilities for that. And as we talked about this uh, earlier this year, I called it, uh, I'm the proud father of quadruplets. You know, I was responsible for Westmere, right, at Intel, which is where the TXT technology that you saw, the trusted execution was enabled, right? I'm responsible for RSA, right? You saw those components. Uh, we, uh, when I was, uh, you know, after coming to EMC, we acquired Archer, which you saw here, and I'm responsible for the VMware relationship. So I'm the proud father of quadruplets, bringing all of those pieces together. But this is really cool and something that, you know, personally I'm extremely passionate about. It must be secure. If it's not seen as secure, we will not accomplish what we are out to do collectively as an industry. So this is really important stuff. The last phase of our journey, IT as a service, and moving to this business agility where we can now start delivering higher values of productivity for CIOs and enabling new models of service in the environment. Some of the steps that we're doing in that area, clearly one of them is standardization. Right? We have to move from having underlying silos of infrastructure to integrating those together and with the focus being optimization toward a virtual machine as the application category that that underlying hardware is optimized for. And in fact, it's the only thing that it sees, right? is operating under a virtualized environment. And that's the, that is the focus point of what we're doing with our VCE, the Acadia partnership with VMware, Cisco, and EMC deliver standardized infrastructure, manage it as a block, optimize it for virtualized environments. We have small, medium, and large, vBlock 0, uh, 1, and 2. But if we ever have to go smaller, I don't know, maybe it's going to be vBlock minus 1 or something. Oh, that can't, doesn't sound good. I guess the marketing people need to work on this, Jeremy. Right. And then as you do that, you work then with ISVs to say optimize for that platform. And at Sapphire this year, we announced the relationship with SAP for the first time SAP, a very heavy workload, one that they never supported on virtualized environments. And now with vBlocks, they say that is a target platform for the SAP uh, application suite. So a very powerful uh, capability. It's also one that we're driving for next generation uh, capabilities as we are seeing them. And, you know, so we are driving that as the standard model of computing, partnering deeply across VMware, Cisco, to enable this view of vBlock as the standard unit of computing for the future. Now, of course, the big advantage that you get from this is the ability to very quickly provision and create new data center resources. And you know, if we were in a scenario where we said, great, build a new data center, and I wound it up and running, right, you know, what would be reasonable? Months, maybe? Right, a whole new set of resources? In the virtualized world, our goal is to be able to do that in minutes. We could establish it. So the scenario we wanted to play out here is, uh, and I have a little bit of help from my V-specialist here, we're going to go provision right, a new data center for an acquisition that we're completing tomorrow. I can't tell you what the acquisition is, but the acquisition is going to be done tomorrow, and I need a data center to bring that new company onto our assets and resources. So, Chad, right, bring your team up here, because we're going to build a data center in the next few minutes. Okay? All right, fantastic. So, oldie-timey team, stand up and come up on stage. New coolness team, come on up on stage. So, who are we acquiring? Uh, I can't tell you. All right, all right. Well, you know. But what I can tell you... Yeah. It's not three par. <laughs> All right, fellas, so you heard the marching orders. Let's stand up some vSphere clusters and let's put vCloud Director on top of that. Give them a self provisioning portal. Start your engines. All righty, so you guys, uh, what, what are those books on the table? Oh, these are Springs First for Dummy, man. It's a great read. I highly recommend it. Fantastic. So, so how are we doing over here, Cloud Admin? So, Chad, I'm using a piece of software from EMC called Unified Infrastructure Manager. I'm just taking a look at what resources we have available on our vBlock in right. Georgia and our vBlock in Santa Clara. Looks like we have enough resources in Santa Clara, so I'm going to go ahead and provision a service there. Okay, fantastic. And uh, looking over here, you know, it looks like uh, storage admin, you're driving, you're, you're, you're creating some LUNs. Is that, is that, is that what's going on? That's yeah. what I'm working on. Okay. Yeah, he's going to create the LUNs. I'm going I'm to prep the server hardware. We're going to jump in. We're going to do the network configuration. Well, network, we really have to wait for a maintenance window. I can get us one Sunday morning, and we can do it then. Sunday. 
Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday. But no, we need to do it right oh, now. No, no I, I can't. It's corporate policy. We can't. Escalate? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, listen. You guys work that out, okay. right? Um, okay. Fantastic. On this side, how are you guys doing? Chad, I've just gone ahead and provisioned my service that I'd created earlier, and I was able to kick that off, and it's in the background running now. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim and uh, let him take over. Wait, 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 one second. You provisioned oh. a service, not like servers and hardware? and. Oh, right. Yeah, I- I'm not doing it that way. I mean, behind the scenes, that's really what's happening for me. But the service offering is actually a template of... What kind of compute resources, what kind of UCS compute resources, what kind of storage pools I want to, I want to have in my and, offering? And you just hit the button and it just hit the button. It. And it goes ahead and behind the scenes takes care of all the zoning and masking, carving out the LUNs and creating the service profiles and provisioning all the storage. Oh, and That's swank. Yeah. And, okay, so you guys here are now into, uh, you know, it looks like uh, UCS manager. It's a fantastic <laughs> interface. And what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing now, server admin? Well, I'm going to prep the hardware. And I'm going to go down to the data center. Uh, I might be able to do this tomorrow if I can find the media. i got to get the build doc. The media? Like, you, you know, to, you know. We get the disk, guys. Yeah. All, all right. Okay. Um, okay, fantastic. Uh, you know, each one of those element managers are the best industry-leading, you know, element it's managers. It's a great but... interface. It just, I can't install ESX from okay. here. Okay, all right. And, uh, and then what are you doing over here, VMware admin? So now that he's uh, provisioned the ESX host for me, I'm using a cloud director to go out and uh, create a V app from the catalogs I've already created, and I'm just going to roll out a couple uh, Oracle clusters. So, so, like, you're basically, like, done... You got about another two minutes to go, and I'll be all done. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, you guys, a uh, chant? Yeah. Right. And uh, in addition, at the board meeting tomorrow. Right. Right. I need a capacity report on the current data center infrastructure. So while these guys are working on this other junk, if you okay. get that done, I got as well. it. Okay. Thanks. You bet. Okay, guys. So so uh, we're going to need a utilization report across all of the infrastructure. So can you can you show me can, how how could you do that? Yeah, sure. Just give me a second to let okay, Jim no, finish no, up no here. Problem. I'll so, show you that right away. So you guys, uh, you know, uh, will you be able to get a utilization report of everything across yeah. the infrastructure? Because the clusters are all stood up and you're good to go, right? Well, as soon as I get the VMs provisioned on Monday and uh-huh. I've got some meetings on Tuesday, I could probably get you some reports midweek. So today is Tuesday. And uh, how long is it going to take? Next, next week we can get it. Sometime, yeah. yeah. Next week. So he said that he needed it for the board meeting, so you'll work through the weekend and all the evenings. And, well, and I'm taking uh, my kids I don't know about that. No. Yeah. Go. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to no. go. No, I need no. your help. I don't no, want to I'm not, pull I'm not, out of these tools. Sorry. I don't so, want to work gotta, the weekend anymore. And how about you, the report? What do you think of this report, Chad? I can show you the resources that are available and used here in Santa Clara and the resources that are used in our Duluth uh, data center. So, you know, the whole thing, done, provisioned, simple, easy. What are you guys reading now? Uh, uh, Spring source. <laughs> Spring source. Dummies. dummies. Fantastic. I can see how this is going to go. <laughs> so if that's all you need, Chad, you want to join us for a beer after the... Hey, I'm, I'm always in for a beer. We're done. Right? <laughs> all right, guys, let's go. Let's go get beers, guys. So tell us what we just saw, Chad. Summarize it very quickly for right. us. So, so basically, the idea here is that physical infrastructure needs to move the same service-oriented provisioning model that vCloud Director is doing at the layer above. That's the only way that people are going to get the elasticity that they need at the virtual layer and the physical layer. Unified Infrastructure Manager makes managing a vBlock a simple service-oriented thing, so a push of a button deploys the service. On top of that, vCloud Director makes consuming that service for the end user, simple and easy and integrated. So, and uh, let's see. So, UIM v2, we announced it this week. Uh, so, it, we announced the beta. There's lots and lots of beta customers mm-hmm. that are, are, are here, okay. and, and, f- and if folks want to see it, they can come and see it in the hands-on lab. Okay, and that'll be shipping later this year? That's going to be Production shipping. version? Uh, you know, very, very near. Okay, and then we have... Very near, right? Yeah. And then we have vCloud Director, which was announced by VMware today. So, essentially... Before the end of the year, oldies are becoming new. Exactly. We're basically delivering vCloud in a nice, tidy box with a bow on it. A huge step toward delivering IT as a service. You got it. Wow, that's you fabulous. Want to for that beer? Oh, we'll work on it. We'll decide. All right. So, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's stand up for a second. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, and by the way, right, you know, Chad really does this in his basement, just to pick up Chad for a second. 
you know, one time I needed to get a hold of them. I called him up, right? And I said, Chad, what are you doing, right? It sounded like, you know, you know, airplanes were taking off in the background. He was in his basement, right? You know, the lights dimmed for the entire neighborhood when he fired <laughs> up a new set of servers. 60 but anyway. terabytes of storage, 13 ESX hosts, it's madness. I love it. Yeah, anyway, they love it. So in summary, yeah. right, and what you heard from VMware this morning, what we want to reinforce in a very powerful way today is our strategy is to deliver private clouds, public clouds, the federation of the two with a common set of underlying infrastructure that is standardized across compute storage and network uh, capabilities to bring us to this new world of IT as a service. Our objective in that is to achieve unheard of levels of efficiency of that underlying, of that underlying infrastructure to enable CIOs, IT managers, service providers with control and finally, a broad range of choice based on industry standard open architectures. And you know, we are delighted that you want to join us on that journey. Uh -huh. We want to work with you and partner with you. And we're just grateful that you join us today for an update on our products. Chad and the V Army, thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. After you.